Polls have just opened in battleground state Georgia, a state where not only is Donald Trump facing 13 criminal charges for attempting to overturn the 2020 election results there, this is also a state crucial to anyone's chance of winning the White House in November. And overnight, Donald Trump said on social media that if he retakes the Oval, he will close the border and also free January 6th rioters who have been charged and found guilty of crimes because of their actions that day. Seeing as Elena Treen has much more on this, she's joining us now. Elena, you have the, Don, how Donald Trump put it on Truth Social. What is he doing here? Right, well, Kate, I do want to just start with uh, looking at the primaries today. But look, you know, the Trump campaign already sees Donald Trump as the presumptive Republican nominee, but they really do see the primaries today in these four states as the way for him to cement that status and clinch the remaining delegates he needs to officially become the Republican nominee. And, you know, you brought up Georgia. Kate, that is a state where both Trump and Biden were over the weekend. I think that just underscores the importance that both men see Georgia as for, you know, as they look ahead to November. Um, and also, you know, Georgia, as you mentioned, is a place where Donald Trump is facing a series of criminal charges. And that does relate to what he posted on True Social last night. We know that Donald Trump has repeatedly called for the release or for President Joe Biden, I should say, to release the defendants who were convicted for their role in January 6th. But he's also facing his own charges, both in Georgia and at the federal level, for his role that day. And so, you know, he's made these comments before. He's used this rhetoric on the campaign trail. But I also think him vowing to release them on social media last night is some of the farthest language we've seen from the former president related to this. And I do just want to point out what we saw a former Congresswoman Liz Cheney, one of the people who was key on that Gen 6 committee in the House, um, what she said in response to this. She said, quote, uh, if your response to Trump's assault on our democracy is to lie and cover up what he did, attack the brave men and women who came forward with the truth, and defend the criminals who violently assaulted the Capitol, you need to rethink whose side you're on. Hint, it's not America. So I'm sure we're going to see other uh, comments like this from people who are, of course, had a role on that committee who are um, dismayed by Donald Trump's uh, actions and, and his continued rhetoric um, in embracing some of these defendants. And I also think, you know, he can repeatedly refers to those convicted uh, for their role on January 6th as hostages, something we've also seen the White House very strongly criticize Donald Trump for. Yeah. Can I also let's also talk about the RNC and what's going on there right now, um, Elena. Donald Trump's team takes over. That's not necessarily a surprise. But then the shakeup that's happening amongst the staff, Politico is now describing it as less a shakeup, more a bloodbath. What's happening? I mean, it is. Uh, it's a bloodbath. It, there's it's wide layoffs, and they really uh, go farther, I think, than many people at the RNC were expected. We're told uh, that they announced many of these layoffs yesterday in an internal email. Um, and again, you pointed out, Kay, and, and you're totally right, that yes, when there is a new team that comes in, new leadership with a new nominee or a candidate, that isn't you know, totally out of the norm. Neither are layoffs, but I think the depth of these just underscore how much the new leadership wants to overhaul the committee. And I did speak, I was in Houston last week while um, they had these elections where the new chairman, Michael Watley, and Lara Trump became the co-chair. Um, and I spoke with many of the staffers there as well. And they told me that they were expecting some layoffs, but again, I don't think they were expecting the depth of some of these cuts. We're told that they affect uh, departments ranging from communications to the data team to the political team. And they're not just senior staffers that are being laid off, but also vendors and also having their vendor contracts be revoked. And so wide changes here. And we did hear from um, one person in this internal email, Sean uh, Kane Cross. He's someone that uh, Chris Lasavita, one of Donald Trump's senior advisors, who is now going to be uh, have a new role at the RNC as well as chief operating officer. He brought in uh, Sean Kane Cross as his number two. This is what Sean wrote in that internal email. He said, quote, Chairman Watley is in the process of evaluating the organization and staff to ensure the building is aligned with his vision of how to win in November. So, Kate, I do think this is a bit of a preview of what we can expect. Um, the new leadership at the RNC to be really overhauling the committee, wanting to change things and really align themselves with the former president's campaign. I'm also told that uh, the Trump campaign wants to really have the RNC be an extension of them. They want it to operate as one and the same. And so I think uh, we'll see a lot more of some of these changes and what the RNC is doing to really you know, help Donald Trump and boost him in any way that they can ahead of November.
Kate, it's good to see you, Lana. Thank you always for your reporting.